Transportation is the largest single source of air pollution in the United States. With that said, hybrids are an aid to environmental problems. Hybrid electric vehicles have a small gasoline engine, an electric motor, and a large battery. The electric motor supplies extra power to aid the gasoline engine when accelerating, passing, and driving up an incline. Because of the assistance of the electric motor, the car can have a more efficient gasoline engine. Vehicles generate hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides, and carbon monoxide, all of which contribute to the greenhouse gas effect, global warming, and smog. Hybrids are also better than electric cars because electric cars use energy, which means they use coal instead of gas. By burning coal, we are releasing mercury and high levels of sulfur into the air. Even though the cars themselves have little to no emissions, the way that we generate power to the cars creates pollution themselves. Okay. Right now we have few zero emission energy sources, such as solar and wind, but we still rely heavily on sources of energy that cause pollution. Most frequently we get energy from burning fossil fuels, but it can also come from nuclear and hydroelectric power. All three methods pose environmental problems. Over 75% of the world's energy comes from burning fossil fuels. In addition to the pollution caused by oil extraction and transportation, fossil fuels spew out pollutants like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide. Splitting atoms creates nuclear waste, which is unfortunately hazardous to living creatures. Scientists have yet to create a way to get rid of this waste practically and safely, as most have a half-life ranging from decades to a thousand years. Hydroelectric energy is formed by controlling how much water is flowed out of a man-made dam and over a turbine. The farther the water falls, the more energy we get. Unfortunately, creating dams can damage entire ecosystems. Naturally flowing rivers fuel the lives of animal and fish populations. When a river is dammed, life downstream suffers dramatically. In addition, creatures like salmon that depend on the river cannot spawn. Hydroelectric energy also contributes to deforestation and erosion. Right now, our vehicles are not zero emission. However, we hope to one day have zero emission vehicles. It is said that the electric car is zero emission, but this is not true. The electricity is actually powered by coal, which is not zero emission either. Hybrid cars are known as partial emission vehicles. We hope to one day have zero emission vehicles. But until then, we must drive less in order to help the environment. Do you believe that vehicles advertised to be zero emission are truly zero emission? Well, I don't, I don't as far as zero emission vehicle advertisements, um, no, I, I don't believe that, that any vehicle really is actually truly zero emission. Uh, even the zero emission fully electric vehicles uh, have to get energy from somewhere. So yes, in that vehicle in and of itself is not emitting any greenhouse gases or any other uh, particulates or anything like that, but uh, the energy still has to come from a power plant somewhere whether it be nuclear, bio, energy, or, uh, or fossil fuels, so. What is your opinion on the internal combustion engine? My opinion on the internal combustion engine car. Well, I've always been fascinated with cars. Not that it's been a major hobby or anything like that, but it's always been an interest. And what amazed me is, is how, uh, cars have evolved over the years and actually I can remember uh, back when I was in high school it was pretty commonplace to to have cars getting upwards of 40 miles maybe 50 miles to the gallon uh, on fuel and then our, our mileage dipped and and I've actually talked about that a little bit in some of the classes I've taught by 111 um, but then I've had that kind of explained away to me from friends that work in the industry and they say that it's because of different testing methods and things of that nature, different standards for different countries so they're able to uh, show an increase in mileage. But in general, my opinion of the internal combustion engine car is you know, we need to wean ourselves from it 
Uh, we can't necessarily do that overnight. We have to keep uh, working on technologies to to uh, improve efficiencies while we go through that transitional process. What is your opinion on the zero emission car? My opinion of the zero emission car, if this is referring to a fully electric vehicle, I, I think this is a, certainly a positive development because even though it's, it, you still have to get the energy from someplace. Uh, it, but if you're if you're talking a fully electric vehicle, it, where you simply plug it in and charge it, um, that that energy acquisition is is at least coming off of the grid, and we can in a in a different way reg, we can we can sort of shift the regulation of of emissions over to more easily controlled point sources at power plants, uh, whether it be renewable, wind, whatever. Uh, we can make a, an easier transition. I, I guess I, I'm very positive on, on electric vehicles, but at the same time, they have to be economically competitive, have to be competitive price-wise in order for the transition to take place. Until that happens, it's, uh, it's going to be an uphill battle. Yeah, there, there's, other, there's other drawbacks in developing that technology, just, just the effort to produce the batteries that will give you enough of a charge to, to really go about a, a significant daily commute or something like that. Uh, it takes a lot of resources to to develop that as well. What is your opinion on hybrid cars? You like hybrid cars as well. I wish I had a hybrid car. Uh, I know there are some dangers uh, still. Uh, dangers with uh, potential problems with crashes that aren't aren't uh, necessarily part of combustion crashes other dangers. Every, everything has its drawbacks. I guess there's no perfect vehicle, uh, but, but hybrid cars are, are again a nice transitional step. I wish we had a cold fusion vehicle like on uh, Back to the Future. That would be the solution, but unfortunately we don't have anything that can hold the reaction. Do you think that someday we will have a fully zero emission car? Well, yes, I, I guess I could say that there will be if we are able to make the transition to fully uh, renewable, non, uh, non emission power sources, wind, solar, uh, all the renewable sources. That being said, you still are going to have to, to make the parts, uh, do the upkeep uh, on all those power plants. So even then, there, there's going to be some emission, most likely, and unless we, yeah, unless things go as I don't foresee them going. But we can certainly go a lot farther toward zero emissions. Yes, absolutely. What steps do you think we need to take to get that fully zero emission car? We need to make sound, logical choices uh, in the transitional process. It can't be an overnight process, and it, we see that it isn't because the technologies we develop are too expensive for the general public to afford. Once those prices come down, and maybe it takes federal assistance with that, which there already is a significant amount of assistance uh, to motivate, so be it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that in a high degree, though. I, I do believe in, in capitalistic ventures. At any rate, though, 
we, we just need to, to keep our heads and um, let, let uh, capitalism drive the entrepreneurs that are going to, to develop the technologies and make them competitive.